yeah, the final point of our uh, program and the third keynote, uh, keynote speaker, um, Ivo Goldstein, professor at the history department of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Zagreb. Uh, now, or in the last 20 years, uh, focusing in his research and teaching in contemporary history. Before that, in the first half of his career, um, his focus was Byzantology and Croatian uh, Middle Ages. Uh, in the last 20, 15, 20 years, he published a number of important uh, books on certain aspects of uh, Holocaust, uh, Jewish question, or uh, contemporary history of, of Croatia. I'm going to mention the books uh, written together with Slavko Goldstein. So um, Holocaust to Zagreb, which was also translated to English as the Holocaust in Croatia. Uh, then in Croatian, um, Jasenovac and Bleiburg are not the same and a monograph about Tito. And then as the only author books in Croatian, uh, Jews in Zagreb, 1918-41, uh, Zagreb, 41-45, uh, and Yasenovac published in 2018. Uh, apart from that, there is a number of books uh, uh, about uh, which are general overviews of Croatian history or overviews of Croatian contemporary history, so Croatia in the 20th century, published in different, in different um, editions. Uh, Professor Goldstein, um, this is it uh, for the introduction. Uh, the floor is yours. You have around 45 minutes, uh, please. Uh, thank you, Igor. Thank you for uh, this um, uh, introduction. Uh, thank you for um, inviting me to be a keynote speaker, which I, pre I appreciate very much. Uh, I'm not uh, now in Zagreb, I'm in Tuzla, in Bosnia. Uh, I'm participating in the uh, festivities around the uh, first liberation of the town of Tuzla in, on 2nd of September 1943, which was very important, which uh, shows the strength of the anti-fascist uh, forces in Bosnia in those times and in all Yugoslavia. Uh, Tuzla was the first bigger town. It is one of the biggest towns in the cities in Bosnia, together with Banja Luka, Mostar, and of course the capital of Sarajevo. And it was the one of the it was the first liberated bigger town in Bosnia in uh, autumn uh, 1943. Uh, and it was preceded. This liberation was preceded. Uh, was uh, the first phase of the liberation of the central Bosnia, which came, uh, uh, the peak of that was the uh, so-called Avnoi, uh, Avnoi uh, Congress in Jajce at, uh, at the end of November 43. So uh, this is something what is not uh, uh, directly, but indirectly certainly linked with the uh, our theme, our the, the theme of our, my paper, anti-fascism in uh, in Croatia. So, uh, anti the anti-fascist movement in Croatia uh, contributed significantly to the anti-fascist coalition. It was a very important, and in fact, as I said, the strongest, together with uh, that in Bosnia and Herzegovina, part of the Yugoslav anti-fascist movement. Uh, and of course, this made. Croatian and Bosnian anti-fascist movements, the strongest in Europe, not counting their occupied parts of the USSR. Uh, for the full four years, the intertwined and different political interests uh, and cross-currents in the great anti-fascist coalition and in the communist front were reflected on the anti-fascist movement in Yugoslavia. They also affected the special position of the Croatian national liberation struggle within the general Yugoslav national liberation struggle. Communists always held the key positions in the Croatian anti-fascist movement and in the entire Yugoslav national liberation struggle. The Communist Party in, of Croatia, the Communist Party of Croatia, not because they were in the uh, Communist Party of Yugoslavia, the Communist Party of Croatia and the Communist Party of Slovenia, founded both in 1937 
Uh, so the Communist Party of Croatia was the main organizational and leading force of wartime anti-fascism and of the uh, national liberation struggle in Croatia. In the wider Yugoslav context, the Yugoslav Communist Party played the same role. During the war years, as various organizations and later government bodies were formed, even those that they were simply called anti-fascist and which included people from various political parties were in fact run, run by the communists. The communists offered anti-fascist and democratic programs and slogans. But as the end of the war drew near, it became increasingly obvious that they would do all they could, to, they could to prevent power from slipping out of their hands even after the war. Thus, anti-fascist slogans and the struggle against the Germans, Italians, Ustashas, and Chetniks were always combined with typically communist slogans about social justice and worker and peasant rule. The Kingdom of Yugoslavia, created in 1918, uh, in fact, it was called the Kingdom of um, Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, but it's no of uh, interest in, uh, in, uh, for the moment. So this kingdom was constantly fraught with ethnic and economic problems. One of the, the, the ideological goals that centralists from Belgrade supported in the realization of the program was that of a unitary and centralized state, uh, poisoned by corruption and clientelism. This antagonized much of the Croatian population's population in the 30s. Uh, so for these reasons, many Croats greeted the proclamation of the independent state of Croatia or IEC on 10th of April, 1941, which was preceded by collapse of Yugoslavia, which was attacked by the Axis powers in April 1941. Uh, so the Croats greeted this new state with enthusiasm. Uh, but disappointment soon, and set, soon set and in sympathy evaporated. Uh, the first great dis disillusionment uh, and blow to Croatian national feelings was the Rome Agreement on delimitation between Italy and the independent state of Croatia, signed in May 41, which ceded to Italy almost all of Dalmatia, much of Hrvatsko, Primo de Littoral, and parts of Gorski Kota, which was inclusive, exclusively populated by the Croat population. And uh, I will show you the the map. So you see these parts with uh, pink, in pink color, which was ceded to Italians in 1941, which were strategically not so, uh, it was big territory, but extremely uh, strategically important. So this was there, uh, this was very important for changing uh, the, the atmosphere uh, uh, among the Croatian uh, national, uh, Croatian nationals. The other thing was uh, after the proclamation of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Croatian, stop sharing. after the proclamation of uh, independent state of Croatia, people thought that they will avoid the war. And after a couple of months, when their uprising started, they saw that uh, uh, this was also not, uh, not true because the war in Croatia, um, in fact, started in sometimes in July, August uprising and then the war. So uh, gradually, but also quite quickly, other disappointments followed. Racial, uh, racial religious and ethnic persecution of Serbs, Jews and Roma, and cruel terrorizing of Croatian political opponents antagonized most of the Croatian population and gave them a deep sense of insecurity. Because if the, if the Jews and the Serbs are persecuted, then sometime sooner or later, the Croats will be, we will be persecuted. And people didn't feel, many people did feel deep uh, uh, dissatisfaction and uh, about the Ustasha, Ustasha were cruel, Ustasha were, were primitive. 
So there was a big ideology, ideological, uh, political, and also psychological gap within the Ustasha, between the Ustasha and many, many Croats. I'm not speaking about the Jews, about Serbs, but the Croats, I'm speaking about, about the people who were declared, were declaring as Croats and Catholics. Uh, and all this was accompanied by grave economic troubles. The independent state of Croatia had to be at the expenses of all the German and Italian troops on its territory. Italy took over its maritime economy and shipbuilding, and Hungary some of the best developed agricultural areas. And I will show you uh, how, uh, what parts, uh, so it doesn't, you, you, we don't see here, but here is Mejimulje and here is Badanya, the parts which are now parts of Croatia, uh, parts of Croatia, but they were ceded to Hungary in 1941. Uh, uh, so, uh, and these were best developed agricultural areas. Someone, some, somewhat later, the, the, the partisans placed under their control large amounts of agricultural areas and forestry and blocked vital communications. The urban population was rapidly impoverished and many were on the verge of hunger. The sudden appearance and steady growth of political and armed resistance to the Ustasha regime and foreign occupation were the clearest indicators of the political disposition of the Croatian and non-Croatian population in the independent state of Croatia. Uh, although the Croatian, sorry, uh, Although the Croatian and Yugoslav communists fought from 22nd of June 1941 to 9th of May 1945 for the goals of the greatest great anti-fascist coalition, they fought very bravely and with extreme self-sacrifice, they never lost sight of their party's final goals. The prevailing opinion was that as long as the war lasted, Commitment to the anti-fascist program and uh, was the uh, uh, and placing themselves at the head of the anti-fascist national liberation struggle was the best way to achieve the party program after the war. Naturally, the goal of the communists was to establish one party, communist rule, and the socialist order. However, they realized relatively early that no political movement could could be successful in pre-war and wartime Yugoslavia without clear views about how to solve the national question. Josip Tito wrote at the beginning of the war that national suppression and inequality that had enabled, had enabled the fascist conquerors to enslave these lands so easily. And he condensed, Tito condensed the national program in the sentence, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia, and that was at the beginning of the war, 41, 42, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia will continue to fight for a fraternal, free and equal community of all the peoples of Yugoslavia against the greater Serbian hegemonists who want to renew the oppression of all the Yugoslav peoples. And all this resulted in the Communist Party of Yugoslavia program from 41 to 45, which focused on three areas. First, a resolute struggle against the Nazis and the fascists and their supporters at home and the most immediate and the most dangerous, as the most immediate and most dangerous enemy, both globally and locally. Second, retaining the Yugoslav community, but reforming it fundamentally on the basis of national equality as opposed to the earlier greater Serbian hegemony in the uh, Yugoslavia uh, between the wars. The third, the post-war establishment of, of uh, one-party government and the socialist order with reliance on the USSR. 
uh, striving for national equality was declared in the program as one of the political components of Yugoslav anti-fascism and the national liberation struggle. This provided the foundation of the, for Croatian anti-fascist and the Croatian national liberation struggle to achieve a degree of autonomy within the greater Yugoslav national liberation st struggle. This autonomy of the Croats was occasionally limited by the centralistic organization of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia as the leading force, but it nevertheless endured thanks to the fact that Croatian anti-fascism had indigenous roots resulting from the specific political circumstances in Croatia. The rigid communist approach demanded that the revolution had to start in the end start in and spread from the towns, and that the party leadership had to give the signs for its beginning. However, in the spring of 1941, despite the capitulation of Yugoslavia and the entry of foreign troops into the country, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia leaders supported a policy of waiting because of the political situation in Europe, in which the USSR, headed by Stalin, was still maintaining a neutral uh, position. Nevertheless, communists started the uprising after Nazis attacked USSR on 22nd of June 1941 and Central Committee of the Yugoslav Communist Party called Yugoslav communists to begin upri uh, uprising and they did so and the Croatian communists did of course the same. So in the following weeks and the month, communist activities by underground communist, uh, underground communist organization in the towns, mostly in Zagreb, Karlovac, Split, were intensified. They were in complete harmony with the current stance of the party leaders as to the nature of an uprising, pulling down telephone and electric lines, attacking soldiers, mining railway lines. It soon became but it soon became obvious that the methods of urban guerrilla and other rigid preconceptions about how to organize a revolution began to result in greater rate losses among the communists. They, this certainly became clear to Josip Broz Tito earlier than to some activists on the field. In the meantime, an, epro, an, uh, an uprising flared up on completely different foundations, only partly thanks to the communists. Why partly thanks to the communists? Because Ustasha began to terrorize the population. The first great Ustasha crimes against Serb civilians took place already in April and in month, uh, and in uh, May. Uh, uh, the first uh, massacres uh, made confusion among the Serbian peasants, and they began to organize, uh, organize themselves to defend their lives from the Ustasha genocidal terrorism. At the beginning of July, Ustasha terror was even intensified. First of all, they for the first time started to kill women and children, and the mass massive uh, deportations of the Serbian population took place already on 5th, 5th, between 5th and 11th July, 1941. So at that moment, Tito understood that there is a potential to, made, to, to intensify the, uh, the uprising organizations, uh, uprising movement in the uh, in the uh, non-urban areas, and uh, uh, the leadership of the creation, not only of the Croatian communists, but the communists elsewhere in Montenegro, in Serbia, in, uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, were sent uh, were sent to the villages to the mountain regions to place themselves at the head of a general uprising and a guerrilla war. Uh, this showed itself to be much more effective than urban attacks and sabotage. 
activists were usually sent to places where they had been born or grown up, or at least which they knew well. Uh, so, thus, an armed revolt broke out against the Ustasha authorities and foreign occupation forces in the early summer of 1941. The main organizers were communists, but the Serb population in the central parts of Croatia, particularly in Lika and in the other parts of the United uh, of the independent state of Croatia, provided the numbers and the main force. At the end of 1941, that means in December, about 7,000 partisans were already organized in Croatia, and around 6,000 were Serbs, and uh, 80, uh, 800 to 1,000 were mostly, mostly the Croats, but mostly also uh, communists. Uh, so, uh, by the end of the year 1941, Already Croatian patriots, that means Croatian nationals and Catholics, began to organize themselves and offer resistance in purely Croatian areas annexed and occupied by fascist Italy. Uh, in, uh, so, in, in Dalmatia, you see here on the south, uh, in Hrvatsko uh, Primorje, here on the northwest, in Gothki Kota, here, which was not annexed, but occupied by uh, Italy. Uh, the people of these areas were horror struck by the forcible Italianization and other violent acts of the foreign fascist uh, authorities. Soon, in um, 1942, the anti-fascist movement began to, sp to spread in other parts of Croatia, in the north, even so in Slavonia, here around Bosanski Brod, here in the central parts, uh, in, um, uh, even in, in the areas around Zagreb, here in, in, in the mountain of Zumberak on the Slovenian border, uh, in, the, uh, in Hrvatsko Zagore, uh, Kalnik Bilogora, here around Bielova. So it was in northwest from, uh, step by step, uh, they were organizing, the partisans were organizing themselves, even in these areas, 20 kilometers south from Zagreb, here in Vukomeric Gorice, uh, in the autumn 1942, there was a brigade, uh, Rade Concha, formed with 800 to 1,000 uh, uh, partisans, which never, in fact, left till the end of the war in the autumn '44 never left this area. That was in, al almost in the suburbs of Zagreb, and they left in autumn 44, or even some months before, uh, to go, uh, they were ordered to go to uh, participate in the liberation of Belgrade, which took place in October 44. So, uh, to, I will quote a couple of, a couple of, um, Uh, I will quote uh, I will quote a couple of sources just to show you uh, what it is about when the um, Ustasha or other uh, or uh, Axis powers or representatives of Axis powers are talking about uh, partisans. So a police report from April forty two said that some Zadar islands, the islands around Zadar, are contaminated by communism. Molat, Dugiotok, Sava, Bojava. They were all communists around there. In May 42, the uh, uh, one priest from the island of Vlač near, uh, near Split reported that the police and customs guards are, are unreliable on the island and that they are uh, uh, scheming with the communists. The local police commander, on the other hand, claimed that this man, uh, that his men have no weapons, and if they had, they if they had them, if they had them, they would hand them over to the partisans. So it is better that they don't have it any. Uh, 
in November that year, 42, Spanish ambassador uh, in, in Zagreb and reported to, to uh, Madrid that he estimates that there were uh, there are about 30,000 partisans in, in Croatia and that they sometimes come as close as 25 kilometers to the capital and that they are endangering the important railway, uh, railway lines. One of them is the Zagreb Lieka line and which uh, has practically been cut off and the line to Belgrade has also been attacked several times. So uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, so uh, uh, the Spanish ambassador was right. Really the Zagreb Karlovac Rijeka uh, railroad was cut off practically somewhere in Rogolski Kota. From time to time, Italians were able to, uh, to possess it to, to, uh, and to communicate with Zagreb, but mostly it was cut off. And Zagreb, Belgrade, uh, railroad was also sometimes, but quite rarely cut off, but it shows the strength of the partisans. So uh, speaking about the uh, political and ethnic relations, the economic situation and so on, uh, it differed considerably from one Croatian region uh, to another. The conditions in Istria or in Dalmatia differed from uh, the conditions somewhere in the north or in the central parts of the country. So uh, immediate motivation for creating an anti-fascist movement and to join anti-fascist units differed from region to region some, somewhat. But generally, disappointment with the policy of the independent state of Croatia leaders and the hard times in the country contributed to the gradual growth of anti-fascist sympathies. After the signing of the already mentioned Rome agreement in May 41, a new blow was the Italian occupation of parts of Croatian territory in August 1941, which was not only uh, these, uh, of course, this was annexed by Italy, but this line uh, shows so-called uh, uh, occupational zones, occupational zone of Germany was this, and this line shows the, the, the border between the zones, occupational zone of Italy, which was to the south, and occupational zones, uh, occupational zone of Germany. So when Italian, Italian occupied these huge areas of the south and of the west of Croatia, and the Germans as well in 41, 42 were, um, largely presented in these northern and uh, eastern parts of the, of the country. So um, when uh, uh, when this occupation, Italian population took place in August 41, uh, for example, there were rumors in Klin and in the, in the town of Klin in Dalmatia that the Poglavnik Pavelic, the leader Pavelic, has been killed and there is, that there is no more Croatia. The next report claimed that the military occupation of these regions by the Italians has caused, caused great confusion and depression among the Croats. And people are convinced that, that there is, that this is just the first step, the final annexation of, of these regions to Italy. Uh, and in clean, clean police uh, reported that the faith uh, many Croats had in the authorities has been swayed because they did not manage to suppress Chetnik's activities right at the beginning, nor to prevent the lawless and arbitrary behavior of the Ustasha. Uh, And of course, there were also great economic troubles. Right after the establishment of the uh, independent state of Croatia, a lot of food had been given or sold to the German Italian armies, which resulted in, the, in a price rise. So uh, for example, there was a report uh, in the suburbs of uh, Zagreb, there were three friends speaking and they criticized conditions in the state and said that the Jews 
were being cruelly treated, that the Germans will take away everything we have, and that Italians have taken away already away all of the nation. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, the peasants were obliged to sell their products to the state, but as the prices were maximized, they were uh, they were not willing to do that uh, to do so. The other possibility was, of course, uh, to sell those product to products on the black market, but then they risk their lives, and they were many peasants who were executed because they were avoiding to sell to sell their products to the state. So it was a regime of terror which was not only uh, 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 against the Serbs and the Jews, but also against the Croats, and not only against the Croats which were, who were anti-fascists, but who were in some aspect um, not loyal to the, to the state. Uh, even in uh, 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 in rich Slavonia, uh, uh, which was uh, 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 which was seen as a rich, uh, rich region, there was a scarcity of flour already in uh, August, uh, August, uh, September '41, and uh, uh, the reports say that the conditions are very, very uh, difficult. So. In the following months, the urban population also rapidly grew poorer, and there were no basic foods, such as uh, no, no, not basic, no basic uh, foods. And the the, um, the 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 population was very badly nourished. So this also contributed to the uh, rise of the sympathies for the partisan movement. Vladimir Nazar a distinguished Croatian writer, president of the Anti-Fascist Council of the National uh, Liberation of Croatia, and the first speaker of the Parliament of the People's Republic of Croatia after the Second World War, gave in February on the partisan territory, February 44, a famous speech. And he said, uh, and he was 67, and he was in those times, 67 or 69 years old, it was quite a, quite a remarkable age. So he answered the question, why I joined the partisans? Uh, and he said, why I joined the partisans at the end of 1942? He said he had been prompted by the inhuman persecution and eradication of the Jews, who are people just like we are. And what is the most important, I was prompted by the ill treatment and slaughter of the Serbs, who are our brothers in blood and who have lived together with us for so many centuries. Uh, the Croatian communists launched an open anti-fascist uprising on the, on the end, on the day of the German attack on the USSR on 22nd June 1941. They were fulfilling their international debt to the first country of socialism under, under attack. However, their success was greatly affected by their ability to, at the same time, express through their, through their propaganda, the bitterness and rebellious feelings of the general population. In only, it only took a few weeks for the Ustasha authorities in the uh, independent state of Croatia to deeply endure national feelings by handing over the Dalmatia, Hrvatsko Primorje, and their hinterland to Italy. At the same time, they antagonized the Serb population, which was almost a third of, total, of the total population of Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, by their genocidal, genocidal policy, policy and the first mass slaughters, which took place as early as May and June. They also provoked lasting mistrust and even growing dissatisfaction among most Croats because of their policy of plundering and spreading terror. The Croatian anti-fascists persistently and consistently fought against the increasingly unpopular Ustasha regime, which, was, which also implied fighting against Italian occupation and German exploitation. Their movement gradually and almost constantly grew in, grew in force 
without the major fluctuations as were characteristics for the national liberation struggle in some other parts of Yugoslavia, for example, in Serbia and Montenegro. It also drew many people to its side with its social program, proclaiming the desire to end poverty and establish a fairer and richer society. Uh, the uniform development and progress of the national liberation struggle in Croatia was greatly underpinned by the successful management of partisan warfare. In its supreme command of the National Liberation Army of Croatia, largely showed itself, itself successful. It did not aim at creating large and permanently liberated territories at any cost, but concentrated more on the dispersion of guerrilla and resistance activities. Thus, there were fewer concentrations of large partisan units in Croatia, and consequently, consequently, the efforts of their enemies to inflict greater losses on them by launching offensives and surrounding taxes were less successful. At the same time, a lot of, uh, a lot of depended on individuals, very capable uh, local commanders, for example, Ivan Lukavina, Sejko Komanola, Vizko Kustulovic and Dalmatia, and others. The strategy used in creating, developing, developing and, the active, and the activities of the land units was similarly mirrored in the case of the Navy, another specific feature of the Croatian anti-fascist struggle. The Navy, which was found in Bogora in Dalmatia, developed, developed within specific uh, conditions and strengthened uh, as it became necessary to fight on the coast, open sea and islands and to link the focal points of the anti-fascist struggle in a region that only military vessels would connect. The, after the creation, Supreme Command was formed in October 41. Croatia, uh, Croatia's special place in the Yugoslav anti-fascist movement became even clearer. It is very characteristic uh, that the commander political commissar and operative officer were all tested members of the Communist Party of Croatia, uh, former officers of the Spanish Republican Army and Croats by nationality. And they were Ivo Lukavina, Marko Leskovic and Franjo Ogulinec. Uh, it is also very important that the Supreme Command of Croatia got authority along more or less the lines of the 1945 boundaries between the future Yugoslav republics. They were, they were in authority over Balanya, and I will show you, over Balanya, and uh, they had uh, authority over Balanya and Medjugorje. We cannot, see, we cannot see your shared screen. Sorry, sorry. Try again. Uh, sorry. So you see it now, yeah? Yes, now it's here. Yeah. So they had, yeah. uh, they had authority against, uh, on, in Istria, which was in Italy in those times, in Medjimurje, in Balanya, which was not then in Hungary, uh, but, uh, but not uh, of the, in the territory of Siem, which is here in the, in the, in the, in the, on the east, which was already, uh, uh, governed by their by the Serbian communists or Serbian partisans, and which belonged after 1945 to to, to Serbia. Uh, so uh, the the partisan leadership, Tito, him, particularly Tito, had already um, strategy, or at least uh, they somehow had uh, um, decided how. Uh, the republic, future republics of the re future republics should um, be delimited. So this was reflected already in the in the war in uh, this uh, uh, boundaries of the uh, boundaries of the res responsibility. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this. Uh, uh, 
uh, was not obstacle. These uh, supreme commands were, were not an obstacle to uh, uh, spread the movement and they escalate the activities and to cooperate with the uh, anti-fascist, uh, with the partisans in uh, Slovenia and in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, uh, uh, for example, Slovenian and Croatian partisans were cooperating very closely and intensively along the whole border from the, from the EK, from Gorski Kota up to Međimurje. Along, as you see here, the, the border even today between Croatia and Slovenia. And they were also uh, cooperating intensively with the uh, partisans in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, for example, here in Dalmatia, around the mountain of Dinara, where the, the Dalmatian communists were also, and partisan units were also very, this, this is already in Bosnia, uh, where the, uh, the, uh, some, uh, the Dalmatian partisans were hiding uh, here in, uh, in the territory of Western Bosnia, in, uh, around, uh, around Bihać, uh, some uh, partisans from Kodun and Banyam were coming around the Asenoas here in Slavonia and the Northern Bosnia, uh, around the Asenoas, also Slavonian and Bosnian partisans were cooperating. So uh, uh, that, was, that was normal. Particularly interesting and successful was, uh, uh, I would say even fascinating, was the maneuver, maneuver, maneuver of the 14th Slovenian division, which was made in May, January, February, 1943, uh, because they were here, uh, uh, the, this division was here for, uh, in uh, uh, round uh, in Bela Kraina in uh, uh, western in the eastern Slovenia near the Croatian border. Uh, they wanted to cross the railroad between Zagreb and Ljubljana, which was very intensively guarded by the Germans, and it was the, the, the Germans were blocking their maneuver to northern parts of Slovenia. Slovenia around Maribor. So the 14th Slovenian division, together in cooperation with, um, uh, with the Croatian partisans, made this maneuver. It lasted for, let's say, one, one month, 30 days. So what they did, they crossed the, the, the border in the mountain of Zumberak and uh, went around Zagreb in the, the around 25, 30, 35, made a third circle around Zagreb, about, let's say, 25 to 35 kilometers far from Zagreb, uh, crossing uh, uh, River Sava as well, around uh, Bielova, Koprivnica. Koprivnica was in those times strategic town on the north, uh, north of Croatia, uh, where the railroad was going from Zagreb to, to Budapest was also held for in those times by the partisans. So around Koplivnica, Varaždin, and they went, they, they made um, this maneuver and went to, uh, to the Steiermark uh, near Maribor. Ustasha and Germans uh, who were in Zagreb uh, tried to block the partisans, but they were not, uh, uh, they were not so brave, they didn't have uh, potential to, to block this maneuver. There were certain skirmishes on the way, but uh, uh, this maneuver was successfully uh, finished without uh, any, greater, uh, any greater loss. Of course, Croatian partisans were participating in the famous battles of Sutjeska and Neretva in, uh, from, uh, March, uh, from March to June 1943, and they were uh, uh, they uh, uh, perished massively. So some 63% uh, uh, of the partisans who lost their lives at Sutjeska and Neretva were Croatian partisans. Of course, it includes the large percentage, when I say Croatian partisans, I mean also the Serbs, the Serbs uh, 
nation, uh, nationals and uh, the, the, the orthodox by, by the religion. So 63% uh, part of the partisans at Snedetvai Sutiska who were killed there were from, from Croatia. This shows also the strength of the Croatian partisans within uh, Yugoslav anti-fascism. So I'm coming to the, the, I'm going to the end. I have, uh, uh, I will try to, to shorten this. I'm running out of the time, 6, 45 minutes. So to, to go to the conclusion, different social classes in Croatia reacted differently to the ideas of the anti-fascist movement. The more sympathy it won, the more indigenous it can be considered and therefore the more deeply rooted in Croatian reality. There is no doubt that the anti-fascist movement had many more supporters in 1945 than, than it had in 43, and more in 1943 than in 1941. As the war drew to the end, the sympathies for the anti-fascist movement among the Croats grew. The crucial peri period being the summer and early autumn of 1943. This change was influenced most by the capitulation of Italy in September 43, and only to a small degree by the mighty Soviet offensive on the Eastern Front and the Allied debarkation in Sicily. For example, the partisan strategy of merciless and incessant attacks without regard to their own casualties and the casualties caused by enemy reprisals against the civilian population, obviously frightened many people in 1941. But by the end of the war, their defiance and courage, the partisan, uh, the defiance and courage of the partisan had begun to win people over. After the terrible experiences at the beginning of the war, the slogan about brotherhood and unity, and especially the mixed ethnic makeup, of the units in Croatia, which made it different from other Yugoslav environments, seemed to many people the only way of breaking out of the vicious circle of mutual, mutual, mutual revenge. As the war moved to its end, and it, because it became obvious that the Ustasha state would disintegrate together with the Nazi, Nazi fascist allies, the partisans' vision of a future Yugoslav community of, of so called equal people equal peoples became not only increasingly acceptable, but practically the only solution possible. Besides democratic proclamations and promises, just as important were the communist ideas of a struggle for a fairer society and equality, and the logical way to achieve this was seen through class struggle and socialist revolution. Finally, everyone realized that despite the, the, its occasional setbacks and crises, the anti-fascist movement was growing stronger as the time went on, and this was the moment to take the side. So many were uh, 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 many were uh, joining the partisans' units as more, more and more as the time as the war was coming to its end. But conformism and compromise must not be neglected as as element uh, uh, either. The more supporters the anti-fascist movement had in all the, the social classes, the more populist it seemed to be. This populism is not only an impression. With the increase in the number of supporters, the anti-fascist movement really did become the expression of the wish of the people. After 44 partisan units and the organization that began to be created as a result of the, their revolution war, Began, began to lose their revolutionary attractiveness. In Yugoslavia and in Croatia too, unlike in all other Eastern European countries, the communists were an indigenous uh, force, conscious and full of self-confidence self that they had much of the population behind them. Thus Tito could, for example, allow himself to arrest August Kosetic Vice President of the Croatian Peasant Party, which was the strongest party of, uh, in Croatia before the war. Uh, that happened in September of 1944, after the nego negotiations with him had failed. 
even the appeals of Koshutish supporters to Winston Churchill himself did not help. So in the first phase of the war, the partisans proclaimed their program of fighting for the renewal of Yugoslavia, not as a centralized monarchy, but as a federal republic. But this idea was betrayed partially because post-war Yugoslavia, although federally named, was in practice a centralized state completely in harmony with the system dictated by a communist party organized along centralist lines with one man at the head of a small group of people who made an all important decisions. At that time, it also became clear that the partisans no longer heeded their other democr democratic proclamations and promises either, but was setting up a dictatorship on the Soviet model. As the uh, constitution of communist rule developed and as the war approached its end, the regime became increasingly authoritarian and then totalitarian, abandoning the earlier principle of voluntary support of the partisans now started to recruit and mobilize. Forced requisitions began, began even in villages that supported the partisans and which during the war and which had until then supplied them with the, what food they had. So the population was left without even necessary uh, necessary minimum, sometimes it happened. Some partisans commanders, including he, Tito himself, began to show the desire to become, become absolute leaders and lived in luxury, which was not in accord with the proclaimed principles of social justice and equality. Uh, the, the, the creation, uh, the Yugoslav partisans took over rule, or U Yugoslav communists took over rule on the model of Soviet Bolshevism and Stalinism. Enemies and potential enemies, enemies and potential enemies were killed and persecuted without trial. Their property sometimes was, was confiscated. I may not say that it was uh, everywhere, every uh, all, all the time, but it happened, and it happened quite often. Uh, so uh, this atmosphere began to be felt in Serbia in the autumn of 40, 1944, more or less from the moment when the partisans entered Belgrade in October 44. In Croatia, killing re real and potential political opponents, and even those who were suspected without any grounds, multiplied. And then the same times, various forms of repression increased, especially in after the liberation in May 45. The stable, and to conclude, the stable development of the nation, national liberation struggle and the mixed ethnic composition of the National Liberation Army prevented the Chetniks movement from spreading in Croatia in the manner and in, in the proportion in which sometimes it, ha sometimes it happened in some other parts of Yugoslavia. The Serb the, the population in Croatia were mostly rightly convinced that the partisans were able to protect them from the Ustasha genocide much more efficiently than the Chetniks uh, could. At the same time, the partisans were also protecting the Croatian population from Chetnik vengeance and genocidal actions much more efficiently than the Ustashas. These values of the national liberation struggle in Croatia had a strong influence on the Chetnik movement not emerge, emerging as victorious in all of Yugoslavia at the end, and at the end of the war. In later de decades, the values the, of the anti-fascist struggle and their practical implementation did not lead to a permanent solution of the national problem in former Yugoslavia and in Croatia for the reasons that are, that are not a subject of the discussion in this paper. However, these anti-fascist values were built into the political foundations that enabled Croatia to decide about its international positions and fate, fate by itself some 30 years ago at the beginning of the 19th or the 20th century. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, uh, I contributed somehow 
to clarify certain aspects of this very important, uh, very important theme, very important subject. Thanks.